nominate and then in November elect Kamala Harris, the President of the United States of America. We're, this is an exciting day, but we're going to hear from lots of speakers. But I just want you to understand, one, thank you for coming out. Uh, we know this is a, a, a long trip for many folks. We appreciate your coming out. Secondly, thank you for the work you're doing back home. Whether you're in a small uh, red county with a lot of land and not too many pe people like our friend Commissioner Bozo who's been knocking on doors there where you got to drive a long way to find a door to knock on. Or whether you're in an urban area where you're trying to get out the vote. You can, and folks may, may be inclined to vote for Democrats, but we know we need to vote big. Or whether you're in the suburban areas where the suburbs are on fire for Democrats and we appreciate all the work that you're doing. For each and every one of you, you know your communities, and we appreciate what you're doing, and we need you to keep doing it. Uh, it, is no, it is no secret that we are the keystone of the blue wall, and as goes Pennsylvania, so will go America. Now, we're going to hear from a lot of speakers today, and we're going to be flexible about bringing them in and out, because people are running from room to room. But remember this, uh, Democrats, no matter where we're from, no matter where we're speaking, we have some basic values we care about. We know that no matter who you are, who you love, how you identify, or what, how long when your family's been here forever because you're indigenous, or they just got here because you're an immigrant, your basic rights need to be protected. Here. Yeah. We have to do some basic things. If you're sick, you should see a doctor. Whether you have the money to pay for a doctor or not, that the greatest country in all the world, you should go to see a doctor. regular folks who work a decent job to make a decent wage, and that's why we're the party of organized labor, and we are proud of it, and we thank our partners for organized labor. And we are the party that wants to make sure you're safe in your homes and your places of work. We don't believe that children should have to climb under a desk or hide. We don't believe that folks should have to run from gunfire. We're the party of keeping communities safe. And Governor Walls, Vice President Harris, for their president, and Vice President of the United States are going to make sure that happens. <laughs> and we're the party of making sure that a woman's rights are protected, including her health care rights. And we're going to protect the fight for a woman's rights to be. And so with no further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce, to also greet you and offer a welcome a woman who has been fighting for the rights of people no matter who they are for a very long time. This is her second tour of duty as vice chair of the Pennsylvania Democratic Party. She served as a councilwoman, she's a philanthropist, uh, and she is one of our sponsors, none other than my friend, my colleague, and our vice chair, the Honorable Peggy Brewer. Oh, 
But you know what's stronger than fear? Fear. Hope. 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 And Kamala has brought us hope. And we can do this. Look at what she has done in a short period of time. We can carry her the rest of the way. Absolutely. Every single one of you have the opportunity this week to learn some skills and some techniques, etc.
well enough to be those chemists and to be part of our, our community and part of our economy. So literacy and reading has always been a huge passion of me. Mine. You probably don't know that I was a Navy kid moving around almost every single year with my, my dad who was in the Navy and my mom a Navy wife. And every single year uh, our scenery changed. But one year we moved to Okinawa, Japan. And in Okinawa, Japan, the television got accidentally lost in the booth. You can probably imagine that the television actually didn't get lost in the booth, but my parents decided it was important that we read instead. Trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. So that's when my love of literacy and with stories uh, hit me, and I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that really hit me at that point in time. One of them was The Phantom Toll Booth, something that I feel like is a really seminal part of my childhood. But another one, this is why it matters to you here, is the Choose Your Adventure story. Today, you begin your own Choose Your Adventure story here at this conference. You get the opportunity to choose where you're going, who you're talking to, what conversations you're having, who you're meeting, because you have 78 days to make sure that story ends up well, to make sure that story ends up with a happy ending. One of my least favorite endings or stories has to do with Voldemort. We want to make sure that he who shall not be named never comes back for another day in office. So as I mentioned, today begins your own Choose Your Adventure. adventure. Imagine the stories that you will be able to tell after this and who you will be able to make a difference with, particularly back in Pennsylvania. I'll end with a final story, one of my favorite ones, Harold and the Purple Crayon. It's a story about a little boy with a purple crayon, and he draws his own story. He draws his own environment, his own surroundings. This is a particular favorite story for me because we in Pennsylvania live in a purple place. We live in a not red place, in a not blue place, but in a purple place. So it's our job to use our purple crayon and make sure that we create the story that we want and finish the story the way it needs to end with Kamala Harris in the White House.
number one. No matter where you go, people want great schools for their kids and grandkids. And thanks to what we've done in Harrisburg, we are investing more in public education than at any time in our Commonwealth history. Thank you. 
Democrats have a little teeny weeny majority in the House. Now in Washington, in Washington they said, in Washington they said they had, with only four or five votes, they couldn't get very much done with the majority. But with a one vote majority, with no vote to spare, our speaker, the first woman to be speaker of the Pennsylvania House,
and we come there with the people at the forefront of our agenda. We come there making sure that my neighbors in Cobbs Creek get everything they need just as well as those all the way in Erie. We come there to make sure that the status quo is no longer acceptable. We've been a caucus that upholds labor every single day for our friends in Erie. Why do I have to participate? 
you're going to shut the, the United Center down, right? And you know what I mean by that. So make sure that you get to the United Center, get them security, and get to your seats. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, Pennsylvania has really good seats. Saying this idea about 
hope being the most powerful word in the universe. It is, but it's not a damn plan. You've got to plan to win. We've got to plan to make a difference. And I just want to say this about the Pennsylvania Party. They just handed me numbers this morning. Since Kamala Harris assumed the role as our presumptive nominee, which you will make our nominee in the year.